So in this section, I want to look at solving radicals, actually solving them. I'm going to do them two different ways, either solving them graphically or solving them algebraically. Both of them have their benefits. For example, if you're doing this algebraically, you're going to get exact solutions. The only problem is sometimes, not all the time, sometimes you might get extraneous roots. Yay. Okay. Graphically, yeah, the cool thing about graphically, no extraneous roots, but because it's graphic, it's going to be approximate solutions. You're not always sure because it depends, like, if you're drawing this, it depends on, oh, well, it kind of looks like it's around there and so on. That's the problem with graphically. It's not always exact. But here's something important to remember. Remember that zeros, x-intercepts, roots, and solutions are all of the same number. Okay, that's really, really important. We're referring to the same thing here. Okay, so let's apply this. Let's do something simple first. I want to do an algebraic one first. And then I'll do the exact same question in the next podcast graphically so you can see the two and shop and compare. Okay, so first things first. I'm going to get this guy right here. There it is. Now, how do you know you have to solve this thing? Real simple. It's equal to something. There's no Y left. There's absolutely no y here. So since there's no y, you're only going to have a value of x equals to whatever. You're not going to have a y equals to. So don't put it down as an x equals to y equals to. And that's really important, especially when you're doing this on your calculator. If you put it on your calculator, you're going to get an x value and a y value. Oh, I see. Only put down the x because if you think about it in this equation, there is no y. Okay, so how do we do this first? The first thing is called isolating the radical. Get this guy by itself. And the way you get it by itself is just get rid of anything that's going along with it here. So add three to both sides. And look, you did the first step. Woohoo! You're a master at algebra. There you go. Okay, then how do you get rid of the square root? Well, that's really simple, too. All you got to do is square both sides. The opposite of square root is squared. The opposite of square root is square root. All right? So all you got to do is take this guy, square this side, square this side, and you're good to go. So you got x plus 5 equals to, yeah, 9. Simple. Then all you got to do is solve. Okay? Solving meaning subtract 5 for both sides. There you go. You got x equals to 4, and there's your solution. 4 works. And if you don't believe me, take 4 and put it back in the original. See if it gives you 0. Well, simple. Watch this. The square root x value I said was 4. 4 plus 5 minus 3. Better be equal to 0. 4 plus 5 is 9. Minus 3. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 minus 3 equals to 0. Hey, it worked. That's a nice, simple, easy algebra one. Did they get a little bit more complicated after that? Oh, heck yes. And I'm going to show you that. But the next step I want to do is I want to show you in the next podcast how to do this graphically and what does this mean. Hang tough.